Imagine a place set in the mystical landscape of northern New Mexico, where writers, artists, and musicians could come together, share ideas, and exchange their creative processes with each other in a wider community. A place where students could go and learn from the masters of these disciplines while getting back in touch with nature and all that nature has to offer. Now realize that this place already exists. A place where one of the most important and influential writers of the 20th century lived and is now interned in the walls of a beautiful chapel. I think New Mexico was the greatest experience I ever had from the outside world. It certainly changed me forever. Bequeathed to the University of New Mexico by Frida Lawrence in 1955, the D.H. Lawrence Ranch has had a colorful history, but was never fully realized and is now in a sad state of disrepair. The time is ripe to change that, to rebuild this powerful place for continuous use by those who will make a difference to our everyday lives. With assistance from local and global supporters, the D.H. Lawrence Ranch could be rejuvenated and brought back to its rightful place as an important world cultural site. My name is Sharon Ord Warner. I'm a professor of English at the University of New Mexico. I've been here for about 20 years teaching creative writing and uh, primarily fiction writing. I'm a novelist and a short story writer and a lifelong fan of D.H. Lawrence. One thing led to another and I founded the Tau Summer Writers Conference specifically to make a connection between the D.H. Lawrence Ranch in San Cristobal which is outside of Taos and the Albuquerque campus of the University of New Mexico. So it's become a kind of a passion for me. We wanted to go back to America in the spring and live at the ranch that Mabel Luhan had given me. She had taken me to the little ranch near Taos and I said, this is the loveliest place I've ever seen. And she told me, I give it to you. But Lawrence said, we can't accept such a present from anybody. I had a letter from my sister that very morning telling me that she had sent the manuscript of Sons and Lovers. So I told Lawrence, I will give Mabel the manuscript for the ranch. So I did. One of the interesting things I have learned about the ranch in the process of writing uh, some grant proposals and so forth is the history of that particular piece of land, which goes back far earlier than Lawrence's occupancy of it and extends of course beyond Lawrence's occupancy of it into the present. And um, so uh, in writing one of those grants we sort of uh, looked at eight distinct eras of the D.H. Lawrence Ranch. The sixth era of the ranch is the D.H. Lawrence and Frida Lawrence era and that's when they occupied the ranch during a period of a total of 11 months but over several different periods of time because they were always traveling back and forth. But they brought some of the important themes of the time to the ranch including uh, tolerance of, of racial differences and equal opportunities for women and they reinvigorated the ranch and brought art to it. Here, on this little ranch under the Rocky Mountains, a big pine tree rises like a guardian spirit in front of the cabin where we live. The tree has its own aura of life. It is a great tree under which the house is built, and the tree is still within the allness of Pan. I have become conscious of the tree and of its interpenetration into my life. Long ago, the Indians must have been even more acutely conscious of it when they blazed it to leave their mark on it.
The seventh era of the ranch began when, uh, after Lawrence's death, Frida Lawrence returned to the ranch with her new husband, Angela Rivali. And um, at that point, interestingly, a number of the people that uh, had never, it, never been to the ranch, but that D.H. Lawrence would have loved to have there, came. They wanted to meet Mrs. Lawrence, and um, they were drawn to the property. And that among those people were uh, Leonard Bernstein, Lillian Gish, Tennessee Williams. Tennessee Williams, in fact, wanted to write a play about Lawrence, and so he lived in the little homesteader's cabin where Lawrence lived for several weeks trying to write this play, but he said Lawrence's ghost was too strong for him, and so he had to leave. So there were so many famous people uh, who came to the ranch during this period, and it really marks, I think, the transition to Rananim, the, the, the project that we're starting, which fulfills Lawrence's dream of a utopian society. Only the fierce common desire to create a new kind of life, this was all that could make us truly meet. I only know that I felt the wonder of him always. Sometimes it overwhelmed me. It knocked out all my consciousness, as if a flame had burned me up. I remained in awe and wonder. I learned that a genius contains the whole gamut of human emotions, from highest to lowest. I learned that a man must be himself, bad or good, at any price. The eighth era of the ranch comes up nearly to the present, and it is marked by the emergence of a number of D.H. Lawrence societies all around the world, and also by annual D.H. International D.H. Lawrence conferences, um, including the one this year that's being held in Garniano, Italy. The ranch is always important to all of those who are interested in D.H. Lawrence because it was the only property he and his wife ever owned. Affiliated with the conference uh, will be a new venture called Rananim, the online writing community of the Taos Summer Writers Conference. And net proceeds from the classes that Rananim will sponsor will be donated to upkeep and renovations for the D.H. Lawrence Ranch. Also education to the public and bringing awareness of the potential of the ranch uh, and its history, its very long illustrious history. So the growing popularity of online writing classes makes um, instruction uh, across the whole world possible. And uh, so we think it's a great way of uh, creating a utopian society which Lawrence had imagined. And I, I really believe that Frida and, and uh, David Herbert would uh, approve of it. It wasn't until 2003 that a colleague uh, from Fine Arts, Marjorie Amder, invited me to come up to her summer program at the ranch. It's in a mystical place. It's unbelievable. And it's a shame that over the last decade it has fallen into disrepair. My interests are trying to rebuild places such as the ranch for everyone to be able to have a place where they could go and explore their ideas and to sh exchange ideas. My uh, ideas about the ranch would be all inclusive of all the creative uh, areas and that's not just limited to art uh, but it would also be uh, for scientists and so forth and I think in that way it's almost be uh, something with an international reputation, something which is akin maybe to the Aspen Institute. New Mexico could really be proud of its heritage through one of the most significant uh, places uh, in the state. We talk and make plans. Plans of coming back to the ranch and having places near one another and perhaps having a sort of old school like the Greek philosophers.
talks in a garden, that is, under the pine trees. I feel I might perhaps get going with a few young people, building up a new unit of life out there, making a new concept of life. Who knows? We have always talked of it. My being ill so long has made me realize perhaps I had better talk to the young and try to make a bit of a new thing with them and not bother much more about my own personal life. Perhaps now I should submit and be a teacher.